Good afternoon. Going to go ahead and get started. Going to bring the speakers up in the following order. Durham Mayor Steve Shule, Durham County Board of Commissioners Chair Wendy Jacobs, Durham Police Chief T.J. Davis, Durham County Sheriff Clarence Burkhead, U.S. Attorney Matt Martin, Durham County District Attorney Satana D. Berry. Following D.A. D. Berry, we're going to have a short q and A. I'm going to ask our media partners to please stay focused on gun violence and the recent violence that occurred in Durham. All right. Thank you. Well, I want to uh, thank my city council colleagues as well as uh, our state representatives for being here with us today. In every city in this country, including Durham, there are shootings every week. But this week in Durham was different, as you all know. This past week, a nine-year-old boy, Zion Person, who was going out with his family to get a snow cone, lost his life to a gunshot. While our police and sheriff's department are doing the difficult work of law enforcement every day at a very high level of professionalism and commitment, this senseless, unspeakable act has galvanized our community for action, and it has galvanized our law enforcement community as well. Our hearts are broken for Zion and his family. Mourn with them, and we send them our love and our prayers. I have two sons, and I can't imagine the family, that the pain that Zion's family is experiencing, is feeling so deeply at this moment. This is a tragedy beyond words. But it is not a tragedy beyond action. While we mourn, we must act. We cannot accept the level of gun violence that exists in our society in general and in Durham in particular. We must do everything in our power every day to stop it. Over the last several days, galvanized by this terrible, terrible, senseless act, we have been meeting our government leadership and our law enforcement leadership to examine what we do, to think hard about it, and to make sure we are doing everything we can to stop gun violence. As you know, we want to make Durham and we are proud that Durham is a city of second chances. We're proud of our work to restore driver's licenses, to make sure that we're not criminalizing small acts. Our work to send low-level misdemeanors to misdemeanor diversion court rather than criminal court. The good work that our DA is doing in terms of bail. We have lots of people who live in Durham with prior convictions who are working very hard every day to make this community better and to make it safe. Like our own Chuck Manning on our I-team or the Bull City United team, we welcome these great citizens in Durham. And these people who have re-entered and rebuilt their lives here in Durham are horrified at the gun violence and are working as hard as they can with all of us to keep Durham safe. We are united as a community against this gun violence. We know that as long as the state legislature will not pass common sense gun laws, that we will have far too many guns on our streets. That is a reality, a terrible reality, that we are living with. This violence will not stop as long as that is true. But we can beat this violence back, and we must. 
In that regard, we are very fortunate to have terrific law enforcement leadership in this community. Chief Davis, Sheriff Burkhead, DA Satana DeBerry, we are all behind them and we are proud of this leadership and we are committed to their success. And they're going to all be speaking to you today. But first I want to introduce County Commission Chair Wendy Jacobs. Thank you, Mayor Shule. I stand here today on behalf of our board and Durham County government, and I want to recognize the vice chair of our board, James Hill, who's also here today, to support the efforts of our chief of police and our sheriff and our district attorney who are working together to stop people who are using guns in our community to hurt and kill children, youth, and adults. Gun violence is a public health issue, and it threatens the health, safety, and well-being of everyone in Durham. Violence can be stopped and cured, like any epidemic, and we are working on this right now in Durham County government. Our Bull City United violence interrupters are working in two neighborhoods to help resolve conflicts, interrupt the cycle of violence, and connect people to the resources and the help they need. Our Reentry Council supports justice-involved people who return to our community and connect them to housing, jobs, and health care. Our Project Build program keeps at-risk youth out of, out of gangs by surrounding them with support and wraparound services. These are just a few of the many ways we are working to try to stop the epidemic of violence in our community. People, we understand that people who are exposed to tr the trauma of violence experience chronic disease, mental health problems, a lower quality of life, and can perpetuate the cycles of violence. That is why Durham County is committed to resources to be a trauma-informed community and to integrate screening for adverse childhood experiences and focusing on resilience, promoting the protective factors for people who have experienced trauma. We can all do our part to make sure everyone in our community feels valued and has hope and opportunity in their lives. We can help friends, family, and neighbors resolve conflicts peacefully and stop using guns. We can mentor and support people we know need help. We can give people a second chance with a good job. Let this tragic loss of a nine-year-old boy, Zion Pearson, be a wake-up call to us all and a recommitment of our collective efforts to eradicate gun violence in our community. We have great jobs in Durham for people of all skills, education, and backgrounds. We have tremendous resources supported by local governments, religious and educational institutions, nonprofits, and the private sector. We must all commit to making sure that everyone in our community has access to the great jobs and resources in Durham. The shooting or killing of any child, youth, or adult is a tragic loss for each of us, and it will not be tolerated and accepted in Durham County. Let's all work together in whatever capacity we have to cure and stop the violence in Durham. And I'll now ask uh, our police chief, Chief Davis, to come. Good afternoon. First, again, let me offer condolences to the family of Zion person. 
the innocent victim of yet another act of senseless violence in our city. We are outraged at the loss of this young man, and we are working with deliberate speed to identify those responsible. In recent months, the Durham Police Department has witnessed an uptick in gun violence in our neighborhoods. I and my staff have personally visited these neighborhoods and spoke to community members who are frustrated about what they've seen. Our priority and strong commitment in the Durham Police Department is to ensure the safety and well-being of all citizens against random acts of violence. Unfortunately, as we maximize our resources to address the most impacted communities, we just can't be everywhere at all times. Most of the incidents that have occurred in Durham are not random, and they have been driven by various motivating factors, such as personal disputes, domestic violence, and in most recent cases, gang violence. The proliferation of gun violence on the streets of Durham has been our greatest challenge as, as your primary public safety entity. We know the illegal gun sales, straw buyers, and thefts of guns from legal gun owners supply gang enterprises no matter how large or how small the network. One of the most potent ways to curb gun violence is through collaboration between law enforcement, our DA's office, the courts, federal partners, legislation, and yes, community awareness and engagement. We must be the voice of the voiceless for the victims who have succumbed to the gun violence in our city. There is no cause more urgent than to commit our time and our resources to end this mayhem. We must remain laser focused, identifying key persons associated with these acts, impose harsh sentences to persons who repeatedly commit violent acts, and work with our federal task forces to aggressively remove high capacity weapons off of our streets. Since January 2019, there have been 207 reported stolen firearms in the city of Durham, and approximately 30 weapons seized by our officers in the last 30 days. Enforcement efforts will be intentional, targeted, and laser focused. Additional resources have been assigned to the homicide unit in the Durham Police Department to focus on known offenders possibly associated with recent incidents. There is also a strong commitment from the Durham County DA's office and federal prosecutors to ensure unwavering gun prosecutions. An ATF liaison agent is assigned and embedded within the Durham Police Department now to collaborat collaboratively investigate gun crimes. We have established a new and reinforced relationship with our U.S. District Attorney to identify violent offenders who perpetrate acts of violence. We have been in strategic discussions with our sheriff and the Durham County Sheriff Office staff to assist in providing increased visibility and community engagement in the most heavily impacted areas where these crimes have occurred. Our gang and intelligence units continue to process intelligence information and are working to identify crime trends and possible suspects. This information is shared internally and with other area law enforcement partners since we all know that crime knows no boundaries. Local community leaders and violence interrupters are encouraged to stay engaged as much as possible at the grassroots level to help curtail potential violence. While the city experienced record lows in crime in 2018, we realize there is still much work to be done to reduce incidents of gun violence. We ask that anyone who has information about violent crimes in the city of Durham to please call us or call Crime Stoppers. That number is 919-683-1200. Crime Stoppers pays cash rewards for information leading to arrests and felony cases. We have received several leads in the last few days as it relates to this recent case. 
and callers never have to be identified. Crime Stoppers also has a 24-hour Spanish language line. I thank you and I look forward to creating a safer city for all of us to live, work, and play. At this time, I would like to call up our sheriff, Durham County Sheriff Burkett. Thank you. Good afternoon. I stand here today with our mayor, our district attorney, our police chief, United States attorney, to commit to take back the streets of Durham County and Durham City to end the gun violence. The individuals carrying out these targeted acts in our community will be identified and apprehended. The Durham County Sheriff's Office and everyone standing here today, we're committed to marshalling our resources, working together to end these senseless acts. What's happening in our communities across this county cannot and will not be tolerated. I want to send a clear message to these individuals who are committing these heinous acts. You will be identified. You will be apprehended. You will be brought to justice. All of us standing here will work together to make our streets safe, to make our communities safe. As the chief said, we will be laser focused with strategic initiatives, surgical precision to take back our streets. Enough is enough. Before another person loses their life, before another mother buries their child, before another young child's life is cut short, before it has a chance to begin, we will act. We want you, our community, to partner with us. I'm talking to each and every resident of this county, of this city, our neighbors, our neighborhood watch groups, homeowners associations. Collectively, we can make a difference and we can make Durham safer. You have already have the Crime Stoppers line. The Durham County Sheriff's Office has a tip line. It's 919. 560-7151. We want you to reach out to us. We want you to call us, work with us. You know who's committing these acts. We need your assistance. It will take all of us to stop this violence. The Durham County Sheriff's Office will continue to be visible, working alongside our Chief Davis and the men and women of the Durham Police Department to make sure that no other family has to go through what happened this week. We need your assistance. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Matt Martin. I'm the United States Attorney here. I thank you, Mayor, Madam Chair, Chief, Sheriff, Madam District Attorney, for inviting me uh, to join and stand with you. Uh, by virtue of being the U.S. Attorney, I work for the United States Department of Justice. I'm the lead federal law enforcement agent in this district, which includes Durham, Greensboro, Winston-Salem, goes north to Virginia border, and down to South Carolina. And the reason I'm here today is to communicate to everyone in the city of Durham and the county of Durham that your federal, state, and local officials are standing together to address the outbreak of violence we've seen. And I want it to be very clear. I've spoken today with representatives from the FBI, the DEA, and the ATF. I want to be very clear. We will bring resources to bear in collaboration and partnership with our partners here at the Durham Police Department and the Durham Sheriff's Office to impact and eliminate gang violence here in Durham. To go after those who are willing to pull the trigger, total disregard for the life of another. To go after those who are willing to bring in large amounts of drugs to poison this community, to disrupt families and use violence as a part of that drug trade. The FBI, the DEA, 
the ATF are coming. We've got a number of initiatives going with the Durham Police Department, with the Durham Sheriff's Office, collaborative initiatives where we are identifying those who behave in this way, selecting them for federal prosecution. Federal prosecution means that there are mandatory minimums for those who have violent records, who have refused the rehabilitation offered them. And I so much appreciate the community of Durham that says you can have a second chance here. And we believe in that. But the third chance and the fourth chance, when you're taking life and you're harming families and you're harming a community, it's unacceptable. So the message, I hope, perhaps any who are listening have been involved in some of these acts or maybe contemplating these acts or maybe are in a gang and have a beef with another gang. I just hope you hear very clearly that your crime will find you out and we will try our best to take you federal and that's a whole different ball game. And I hope those in the community, I thank you for your support of your law enforcement officials and the community members who are trying to address the violence. I just want you to know that we're working hard. We're working hard. That's every neighborhood, every community across this city and across this county. We're working hard to decrease the violence levels and the level of drugs flowing in. We're on your team. And I hope, as the sheriff said, that you'll be willing to come forward and help us to help solve some of these problems. Thank you again for inviting me. I'll now hand it over to District Attorney DeBerry. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The death of Zion Person is a tragedy. And Zion belongs to all of us. I just learned after his death this week that he played football with my own cousin. Um, so he's no stranger to us, uh, and his life is important. So I'm the last person to speak here because every homicide in Durham County lands in my office. What we know is that these are not random shootings. Neither Zion nor many of the victims this year were random victims of a violent city. We know that a small number of people are responsible for most of the violence in Durham County. So gone are the days where there was no cooperation between Durham Police Department and the Sheriff's Office and the District Attorney's Office. I consider Chief Davis and Sheriff Burkhead my coworkers. We are committed to working together to identify those individuals and hold them accountable for the trauma that they've caused in our community. During my campaign and since I took office in January, I had pledged that my office would prioritize violent crime. That is what we've done and what we are doing going forward. We have a very experienced prosecutor leading our homicide team. We have created a separate homicide and violent crime team that focuses on those things here in Durham County. We're working through a backlog of nearly 100 pending homicide cases to bring some closure to those families who have been waiting years for prosecution. We've held pre-charge meetings with law enforcement on every homicide charge to ensure that there's enough evidence to proceed to court. What that means is that there's excellent police work now being done in Durham City and Durham County. So far this year, our office has closed eight, 24 homicide cases. And almost every homicide that comes to our office, the victim and the defendant knew each other. There are many factors involved in these cases, and in many cases, there absolutely is a gang connection. But I have to lift up that a significant portion of the homicide cases that come to my office are also people who have been the victims of domestic violence. And make no mistake, invariably, those also involve guns. Just because those tragedies happen behind closed doors in homes doesn't mean it isn't up to our community as a whole to address them. That's why my office has been working so closely with law enforcement and, and community organizations like the Durham Crisis Response Center to connect survivors of domestic violence to resources and to 
identify those who are at most at risk of fatal domestic violence. As everybody said before me, solutions to the violence in our community doesn't just lie with people like me. We need the people of Durham County to help us. We need you to call the police when you hear gunshots or witness a shooting. We've noticed that many, many, many of our homicide victims have been shot before, sometimes multiple times. So it is really important when you hear a shooting that you call DPD or the sheriff. We need you to agree to be interviewed by police. Somebody knows something. And you may think you don't know anything, but what you know may be exactly what law enforcement needs to proceed. We need you to come to court. Often in Durham County, it has taken many years for homicide cases to get to court, and we can no longer find witnesses. We need those witnesses to come forward so that we can move these cases more quickly. We need you to share tips with Crime Stoppers. Again, somebody knows something. One life loss is too many. And as your district attorney, I stand ready to work with our residents, with our community organizations, and with law enforcement partners to build a Durham in which we are all safe. Thank you. This time open up for questions. We have a microphone in the back. This is being recorded, so please use the microphone. And again, please focus on violent crime. Thank you. Hi there. There's been talk about potentially getting uh, the shot spotter technology in Durham. W where is that right now? Actually, the shot spotter technology is still in an evaluation process as it relates to um, presenting it to um, our budget maybe next year. Um, as you know, we've done some evaluation of that technology. We've paid a lot of attention to what it has done for other cities. Uh, right now, we have some other priorities, but that technology is not off of our radar as far as possibly incorporating in our department at some point in time. Can you tell us a little bit more about the plan to increase visibility by the police department and the sheriff's office working together? Perfect example. Yes. <laughs> so um, Sheriff Burkhead and I, not just in recent weeks, but um, literally in recent months, we've met several times to really talk about how we as even though we're separate departments, we have mutual concerns as it relates to public safety. And in uh, recent weeks, we've talked about those areas that have presented uh, significant problems for us where, as a department, a department, we may not have the resources to cover 24 hours or with the amount of visibility that we like because of the fact that sometimes our officers are going from call to call and it works when you have another department, serves as a force multiplier to have the county to sort of help fill in the gaps. They're out there, but now we're being a little bit more strategic as um, our, our sheriffs and, and, and cohorts at the county are out on the street, at least if they have the addresses of locations that we consider hot spots, their officers or their sheriffs can ride through those locations in the wee hours of the morning and provide that visibility, which is a deterrent. Um, not necessarily enforcement, but just the visibility of alone serves as a deterrent. Did you want to add something to that? As the chief said, and, and you all have heard me say it before, uh, we're one community, we're one Durham. The chief and I both have finite resources. So to me, it makes perfect sense for us to work hand in hand as much as possible uh, to assist one another. And in times like these, when we know uh, that these violent incidents are occurring. Uh, and let me also say, most of what the Sheriff's Office does, 80% of what we do is inside the city limits. So again, it makes sense for us to work alongside Chief Davis and, and uh, women of the police department to address this issue, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you are in Bahama or Southwest Durham. 
we're going to work together to address this gun violence. Chief Davis, you said that um, it's uh, over the last 30 days, you guys taken 30 handguns, stolen guns off the street. And um, the DA had mentioned that it's a small number of people that are committing these violent crimes. Um, through the last year, I'd like to know, are you guys tracking the adjudication of those people that are picked up for those uh, stolen firearms, one? And two, are many of those people repeat offenders? Uh, we absolutely are. We track offenders in, internally, and recently we have begun tracking the adjudication of various types of cases so that we can be informed about who it is that's released back on the street. Because if there's an individual who has demonstrated that they are a repeat violent offender, I'm not talking about individuals that are first-time offenders. We're not interested. We're, we're more interested in them finding their way in society. But there are individuals that continue to wreak havoc on our community. I know some of them by first name. And once they become so familiar to us, it's important for us to keep track of them. And yes, we do uh, a pretty, pretty good job as it relates to knowing when they get out. We work with parole and probations as well so that we can get lists of individuals as they're released. Um, tracking guns has been recent because we, we started seeing the proliferation of, of guns on the street. And we started um, assessing the data as it related to stolen weapons from legal gun owners and individuals in possession of stolen weapons. So you have uh, gang members that are in possession of a stolen weapon and a, a citizen who's a who may have left it in the glove compartment or unsecured in some other way. And that's the other messaging that um, we, we are trying very desperately to get out to the community, be responsible gun owners, lock your weapons up, and keep them out of the hands of individuals that don't need them. Thank you. Did I answer your question completely? Uh, sort of. I guess you could. Yes. Job, I see. Absolutely. But we try to keep our eyes on. Did you want to say something about that, um, DAD? Yeah, if you want to. I um, just wondered, of those people who are, who are caught with stolen firearms, are, are any of them repeat offenders? And as far as the adjudication of them, what, what's been going on with them? Are, are, are they cases being dismissed or are they being um, brought, to, brought to justice? Well, we don't dismiss cases of dangerous offenders. That doesn't happen. Um, we've been working more closely with DPD and the sheriff's office to identify the most dangerous people. That intelligence has not always gotten to the di district attorney's office. But by creating a homicide and violent crime team, we also created a drug and property crime team that works every day with those task force here at um, DPD and at the sheriff's office. So we know the names of people who are dangerous in our community. Like um, the, the chief said, some of them we now know by first name. Um, and so we do pay more attention um, to people who have records than to people who don't. Tim with ABC 11. My question is for the city. Um, police Chief Davis asked for 18 police officers for this coming or this fiscal year. It was denied. I wonder, is there regret now? And if this now builds a case to bring more officers for the next year? Thanks for the question. Um, the uh, city council majority made that decision some time ago, and uh, that's what's in our budget now. And the chief is, uh, does a great job. We have 550 uniformed police officers, and we have a great leadership in our police department, and they're going to do a great job doing the work that they need to do to target these most violent offenders. One of the things we know is that if we'd have, no matter how many police officers we have, it's very unlikely that a police officer would have been standing on the corner where Zion person was killed. You can't police everywhere. We know that at the same time that the high level of visibility that the sheriff and the 
and the chief talked about are very important and we're really glad that they're working together. But I want to emphasize what the chief, the sheriff, and the U.S. attorney have said, as well as our DA, that the concentration is on those people who are relatively few in number, who are absolutely creating enormous havoc in our community, and making sure that those people are identified and that they are taken off of our streets. And we are all fully in support of that. There was mention of an uptick in violence in recent months. Uh, can you point to anything in particular that's causing that? Not to get into deep specifics about it, but there is obvious, we mentioned gang activity. There's obvious beefs here in the, um, in the Durham area that we've been able to identify, and we're working diligently to try to identify some of those individuals that are committing those crimes. Uh, as mentioned, much of the criminal activity is being committed by a small group of individuals. And, and that's why we're, we're, you heard the term, laser focus. Uh, not casting a wide net on communities, but identifying those individuals that we feel are perpetrating these crimes. Chief Davis, are you able to go into specifics on why you think Zion person's death was targeted and why you think it may have gang indications? Unfortunately, Tim, I'm not able to go into specifics. Those, that information is just based on some initial uh, information that we received. This is still an active case, so unfortunately I can't go into those specifics. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you go into the specifics as to what the ATF, FBI, um, and DEA are going to be doing in Durham? So we have a few things going on. Uh, first, we've been working with, ATF has been working with, and our office has been working with the Durham Police Department on a uh, system called NIBIN. It's an acronym, N-I-B-I-N. And that system involves taking images of shell casings that are found at crime scenes and comparing those with a computer database of other images. And so frequently we're able to make matches between guns to be able to link certain guns to certain crime scenes. And then as the, uh, the chief mentioned, when people are arrested with weapons, we can sometimes link those weapons to crime scenes. It's a powerful investigative tool. So we have just stood that up. Uh, Chief, I believe that's just been within the last few months. Yes. Uh, and so the ATF has been working very closely with DPD on that. So that's one example. Uh, another example are the uh, coordinated, I'll call them coordinated task forces that uh, the Durham Police Department and the Durham Sheriff's Office participate in with the FBI and with some of the other federal agencies where you have officers who are cross-sworn federally and are local officers and they're able to get uh, assistance and resources from the federal agencies themselves, intelligence gathering, things of that nature. Uh, and they also are able to present federal cases for federal prosecution. Uh, so that's another example. And we have a few others. I don't want to, you know, dive in too deep, but uh, we've got a few other things we're doing. Yeah. At press conference, I want to thank our media partners and also our civic leaders for your attendance. Thank you.